Welcome to another video of the YouTubing variety. Today we're gonna to be talking about this stupid piece of equipment that you kind of need as a working professional for video things, but I hate it. I really do. <laughs> All right, so if you don't know, this is the Ronin S, the DJI Ronin S. It is a gimbal stabilizer thing used for video to make sure that you're stable and that you're not super shaky and jittery with your footage. Now, I don't like this to use this piece of equipment, honestly, a whole too much, but I do think that it is a very vital piece of equipment for a working professional. I've been using this gimbal now for two years on every single shoot that I do. I always bring it with me. Um, the reason that I don't like it is that lately I've been having a lot of issues with it. So this is a very recent problem, um, but the problem was very severe, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. So first off, I want to say that for most clients that you get as a videographer, they care less about if it's in 4K or 1080p kind of capture quality. They will notice more so if your footage is shaky or not. And I don't mean shaky as in like there's movement in your footage. I mean that you get those little micro jitters, those little earthquakes every time that you take a step or something. That's what I've found most clients will notice. Wedding people have straight up asked me like, is it going to be like stable footage? They don't ask me if it's going to be in 4K. They ask me if the footage is going to be stable or not, or if it's going to be shaky. And I assure them, I'm like, nope, the footage will be stable. Don't worry. It'll be all right. Like I got it. I got equipment that I can use to ensure that your stable, that your footage is stable, not your stable is footage. So very, very, very important piece of equipment. Now you don't have to get a motorized gimbal. You can get a stabilizer, the, 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 the stick with the weights and the things. So you can get that mechanical. It's a little bit more work and maybe more of a learning curve to use, but it works very well, probably better than this thing. Um, I've gotten these little bars. So this is getting into the parts that I don't really like. So I've gotten these handlebars from DJI to hold because I find that this is a lot more comfortable and I can maintain this position a lot longer than I can this position. I find that when I'm holding the gimbal like this, I'm relying a lot more on one hand or the other, typically my right arm because it's a little bit stronger than my left and it's on the top. So I find that I use that a lot more so, but when I'm like this, I'm distributing the weight evenly. Now the thing with this. Uh, and having that even distribution is that it gets heavy. These things are heavy. Like this is already kind of heavy. And if I'm standing there holding this for 12 hours and I can't put it down, which is ridiculous, you should be able to put it down. But if I'm standing there for a long periods of time holding this, I definitely feel the weight of it. Um, which is to say that's not a bad thing or anything like that. But when I put my camera on top, it does get a little bit frustrating. Now, those are all the little annoyances, I guess, that just come with these things. Uh, it's lovely that this is a stand and you can easily put it down. That's fantastic. Some of these don't have that, which is really garbage. Um, so don't get me wrong. The parts that I'm talking about are good things. They're just things to be noted, as in it's heavy. Now, here's the part that as a working professional, is was like a no-go and almost made me just like sell this and never touch it again. The first one uh, being, this was like a bit of a me problem that I wasn't 100% sure. When I put my camera on here, sometimes the motor would actually like swing back and forth or start bouncing or shaking. And I thought that maybe I was straining my motors too much, but like I'm using a mirrorless camera with not a ridiculously huge lens. I'm well below the weight limit, but I had some very awkward like shakiness to my footage. And when I was holding the camera sometimes like, and I was trying to just be as still as possible, sometimes my camera would go and I was like, what? And it almost like completely ruined the footage. And if you're a wedding videographer, 
you don't get a chance to really do a lot of things again. So when I was standing in the ceremony, I'm holding this, and then this like starts like shaking and vibrating. I was like, it's over, it's done. I'm gonna have to refund these people money because I'm gonna miss their like vows, their kiss, their big like, I now pronounce you man and wife, whole situation, end of the world. The important part of a wedding. Luckily, I was able to stabilize the footage afterwards in post, but you certainly don't wanna have to rely on that ever. So that was a very frustrating point and I ended up being able to fix that and the way that it was fixed was actually in the app there was an there's a so like I would calibrate everything and everything said it was fine and I would still get that shaking but then in the app there was a portion under the motors where it says auto tune and apparently I just had a click auto tune and then it distributes more power to the motors to be able to handle the camera weight that I had on it. And that wasn't told to me anywhere. So that's the part that I didn't like, is that DJI didn't have that information anywhere. I actually had a friend of mine tell me that that might be the problem, that they've heard that problem before, and that this was a solution that they had found. So I blame a little bit of the like lack of information from DJI and some of the like quick troubleshooting things that I was trying to do through the app and stuff like that where that wasn't helping me at all and then I just had this issue ruining footage stress and anxiety which you don't want when you're shooting a wedding moving on to the second thing that honestly was the biggest headache of this gimbal the thing that almost made me throw it out the door and never look at it again was this plate I will take it out this plate, which goes on the bottom of your camera and then slides into the gimbal, doesn't fit anything else. Anything. Which really, really made me upset for a really long time. So, uh, working on set and stuff like that, sometimes you want to go like, oh, handheld gimbal stabilizer shot to a tripod shot to maybe just like holding in your hand to like a shoulder rig or something like that. You want to be able to seamlessly switch your camera between multiple things. Or for example, if you're shooting a wedding, you want to be able to go like, oh, I want to go from this to a tripod and just have the tripod sitting there or a monopod or something like that, like so that you're not holding this throughout the entire ceremony. You want to be able to easily switch those things. So I bought a monopod, great monopod, works super well, but the plate is smaller than this. And that was a little bit of a mistake on my part. Not that big of a deal. I was aware that I was doing that and that I would have to unscrew this plate and then re-screw it on the monopod every time that I wanted to use it. That was a sacrifice that I kind of made and I was like, oh, I'll buy a different like head mount thing for it later. So then when I went to do that, I went to buy a tripod, a video tripod, and I bought one that was the same size as this so that I could easily take my camera out of the gimbal, stick it in a tripod, Bob's your uncle, moving on. But it didn't fit. I don't know why it didn't fit. It just didn't. I like, it looks the exact same. I don't have it with me, but it looks the exact same as this. It's ridiculous. It is the same size, it's the same shape, Everything's the same. The only difference is the bottom bit. There's a little bit more on the tripod portion. I tried this going into the tripod and I tried the tripod one going into the gimbal and neither worked. It was like millimeters too much of a difference in size. So naturally I went to the store being like, hey, like what's going like, um, can I like, like what's going on? Like, why does this not fit this? What's happening? We spent three hours, not kidding. I spent three hours with a sales associate in the store trying different plates on the DJI Ronin and none of them fit. None of them. They had, and like even the ones from Manfrotto, very well known company that even said like, guys, we make a plate that fits on DJI. It didn't. Don't know why, but it didn't. So we spent forever trying to find one that would work and then nothing. The solution that I ended up coming up with was buying this adapter don't know how well you can see that this adapter it's just a dove clamp and then putting on a smaller piece that fits and I bought two of these so one for the DJI one for the tripod and then I have the monopod as a whole other thing 
and it just sits in there and it works really well. Cool, but I had to buy these extra little adapters, quick release adapters. The moral of the story, or the ending of the story, the, the whole thing of the story is that DJI decided to make a freaking thing that didn't fit on anything else. I don't know why. I don't know if it was like, oh, we want to be different. We're a different company, so we're going to do this different thing. But it was stupid. It was a bad idea, and it made me, as a working professional in the field, just not want to use it ever because I didn't want to unscrew and then screw in this stupid plate every single time I wanted to switch from one thing to another thing. For weddings and stuff like that, you want to be quick. You want to be able to like easily like move between your gear and switch out your gear so that you don't miss anything. The more time that your camera is not usable, the more of an opportunity you have to miss something, which sucks. Because if you miss something big and important, it's the end of the world. So, the solution, again, is like I said, to buy these little quick release adapters. You can get different ones. I decided to get the Dove clamp from Small Rig because that's what I just chose. And now this plate just stays on my camera all the time. Sorry, stays on the, the Ronin all the time. And then I put a different plate on my camera that I can just slide in there and then I tighten it and it works fine. So, I don't know why they did that. I don't understand that. But if you want to be able to use this gimbal on set and you're not planning on only using this, you want to have the fluidity to be able to change from a different set of things, stabilized things, tripods or whatever it is, you like essentially have to do this. I apologize for that small rant. I get very heated over this stupid thing. Now that I have uh, these quick release clamps, I fixed my motorized motor problem and stuff like that. I'm much happier with my purchase of this thing over the past two years. Two years and it's worked great. It's worked fantastically. My business, uh, my business has evolved now into doing more like set projects, more like on set things and like stuff like that so i'm not exclusively using this but as a freelancer as a more running gun as weddings or anything like that it works beautifully it works very very well there's a bunch of different versions of these things from different companies they all have slightly different features they all work same kind of deal it's not necessarily just this specific company so Keeping that in mind, this thing also got like drenched in water and it still worked. So that was good. <laughs> um, that was very nerve wracking. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend having something that will stabilize your footage, whether it's in body camera stabilization, which has been getting amazing lately with the new like Canon R5, R6 line with their like crazy good stabilization. I know that like Lumix cameras Panasonic cameras have really good stabilization even the Sony cameras now have been like upping their stabilization game in camera so these things have gone a little bit to the wayside where it's maybe not super necessary and what I will say as my final little thing is make sure that you can shoot handheld just as well as you can shoot with these things I what I use this primarily for is if I'm going to be doing a lot of walking or if I'm going to be like uh, running or anything like that or running downstairs, walking downstairs, stuff like that, uneven surfaces, using this 100% of the time. For every other shot, for those like small detail shots, for like those like pulls and pushes on like a table or something or like anything like that, handheld is what I do because I know that having the ability to shoot handheld is very important. You have a little bit more control over the camera and over the camera settings. And I find that a lot of people have become too reliant on these things in the profession where it's like, we can't not shoot with this. We can only ever use this to shoot. And you're limited on some of the camera controls that you can do uh, with these things. So that's it. 
this is a long video. I apologize. It's a little bit of a rant. But those are my honest, professional, opinion, working opinions on these things. Use them as a tool for what they're used for. Don't become reliant and crippled by not having it kind of situation things. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I'm going to be making more of these kind of professional, actual use it in the field reviews. Not a YouTuber review, a freelancer review a little bit more so so if you enjoy that and if you got something out of it comment like do the things i hope that you have a fantastic day and i will see you on the next one peace